Whoop whoop to all my juggalos out there. I, your Rainbow the Clown, is here to help you look at the rise and fall of our ICP with the beginning of a three-part mini-issue series that dives into the backstory of how our clowns became to be. <laughs> so let's dive right in like a sip of fago and look at the ups and downs of the wicked clowns. We begin with an abusive husband after he's already abused his wife for not cooking dinner the way he wants it. She grabs a knife to end it for good only for shadowed figures asking for her to let them handle it so he, she is not the one at fault. As we see the dead abusive surrounded by playing cards, we go to a second prologue where a pimp named Bubba Finding out a club and being the man he is, is pissed that the club exists. Our hidden figures give him a ticket for two as they meet the ringmaster and also die. All I have to say is, ringmaster, you need a good nail clipping. Prologue number three shows a little boy being robbed by a dark green haired man who takes his lunch money. We learn how much people shit on his life as he runs into the hidden figures who give him a box with a question mark on it. The green haired dude takes the box and turns the crank only for green energy to swarm around him and proceed to torture torment and eventually kill him by our hidden figures. That's what you get for touching shit that's not yours! Anyway, it's flashback time! We go to before the coming of the Dark Carnival, where we meet Violent J and Shaggy 2 Dope, known now as the Inner City Posse, who are driving towards a concert of their own. But they run into a rival gang who has been detagging their signs. A gang war breaks out between ICP and Jack, who eventually causes his boss to let him know what happened. We then go to the ending of a concert, where our posse is once again attacked by Mr. Lomax's men, and Lomax himself is the one who is there in person. You know, as often as they get into fights, Maybe, just maybe, it's them and not, you know, all the people that want to fight them for no reason. Just a food for thought. The next day, our duo are at their sewer jobs, but they are visited by a spectral clown spirit who talks to them about power and becoming recruitment and workers for this alleged dark carnival. And thus, the inner city posse dies, now becoming the insane clown posse. We get a quick story of the clown's work over the years, revealing each Joker's card, including their concerts, as we come to the present, where the carnival gives the clown the newest card, as they take the elevator to see Lomax, only for Lomax to screw them over. In this comic, Lomax is actually a representation of the company of Disney that, you know, decided that they were going to drop ICP off their label right as soon as the Great Malenko got released. Don't believe me? Look it up! But the clowns have their own tricks up their sleeves as they summon the Great Malenko and saw Lomax in half, saying they are heading to Big Dick as they do so Trojan horse style jumping out of a drum. You know, instead of jumping out of a drum, I personally would have jumped out of a glass of Fago, but you know, 
Yes, it's me. Our clowns go through and kill most of the people in the room while demanding the lawyers make the contract null and void. The lawyers cooperate, but of course the clowns kill them anyway. And we watch as the lawyers go to hell with the promotion of the next issue. So, there you have it. An origin story fit for a couple of nitwit clowns. That being said, tomorrow, we're going to release the amazing Jekyll Brothers. <laughs>